the British main force defeated a Japanese counterattack near Kyoto, pushing out further to secure the strategic line marked by the Yodo River, with help from the burgeoning George Hook. On other islands, Tadakuni Jervis destroyed the men sent to evict him from Shikoku, preparing instead to take more of it, and Jos Arten landed on Goto in force, wiping out a hastily assembled army and making himself at home in a castle. The Japanese weren't giving up yet though. Another attempt was made to break the weak point in the British front line, the mostly conscripted army of Charles Alcock. Damn, they're too late. There's nothing we can do for them now. Sergeant Major, the southern sector is low risk. Move all but a signalling detail to the northern redoubt. Oh my, where's that cute little Charles I know? Hello, Mr. Military Man. Miss Westerman, stay inside. How rude. I'd hope my man would be more obliging. I'm not your man. This is dangerous and I need to concentrate, so please go back inside. Danger's my middle name, honey. By the grace of God, you are something else. Something special, huh? Don't you think your daddy would have gone and found something nice for his little boy? Poor young man, afflicted with illness as you are, makes me feel so sorry for you. I just want to take you in my arms and tell you everything's gonna be alright. Get your hands off me! My men are dying! If you want to bloody watch, then be my rootin' tootin' guest! Just be quiet! Private, send up three flares over the river, at bearing 300. Search passion. I know I'm safe here with you, darling. Hold on to something and plug your ears. The artillery is firing. Why, I am fresh out of options. I'll just have to hold on to you. Is that so? Private! Private, get over here! Miss Westerman wishes for a man to cling to. Do whatever she wants, and try to survive. I'm going to check on the lines. Oh, that little man of mine. So sweet, but so sharp. There's a storm coming for you, Charlie. Me, oh my. Hello there, welcome back to Honourable Gentlemen. Right now, Charles is facing two armies trying to break into his castle, and the gates were open at the start of this battle, meaning the enemy are coming in in a much more effective fashion than they usually do. It's not just one or two men at a time, they're coming in with their formation intact, and they can set up just like this and blast our men at point blank range. Of course, we're doing the same back to them, and I think we still have the overall advantage because our men on the wall behind our front line will be providing extra fire, so still those are exchanges that will go in our favour. I've also got some units of volunteers who came up to support the southern side of the castle when the enemy came around to use the gate, because these troops decided to ignore the volunteers and just get shot as they came in, so that thinned them out a fair bit. Then once they got into the castle, they had to climb over the bodies of the men who went before them and try to form up in front of me, taking yet more losses. We've got multiple lines right in front of them and guys forming up on their left flank now to shoot into this blob. And while they'll do damage back to us in the ensuing fight, just like with the other side of the castle that we saw earlier, things will eventually work in our favour if we just leave it. Here you can see that the fight has been won in the north, just a few units forming up weirdly facing the wrong direction in front of us. This would be devastating for them, but our men aren't being terribly diligent about actually engaging them. Perhaps they've just got bored of fighting at this point. Finally though, everything is wiped out without much further action from me, and that's a decisive victory. So that's a couple of enemy armies taken out of the picture. I thought we'd have heavier losses on our side, but we only lost one unit that was from the reinforcements who got attacked by cavalry right at the start, so pretty good trade overall. 
At the start of the next turn, we get more rumours that our vassals are planning to betray us. It's the Harado and the Tatsuno, both factions who have been rumoured to be planning to betray us before. So now I'm just not going to have any of this. I've already prepared an army here with the Tatsuno, just in case they betrayed me. But because they haven't done it yet, I'm going to turn the tables and betray them, <laughs> preemptively stopping them from doing anything against me in the future and freeing up these troops, of course. So there we go. No problem. They weren't guarding their settlement since they were setting up ready to attack me, presumably. So that was fine. As for the Hirado, we can't punish them so easily, but I have gathered some troops from Nagasaki who can start sneaking behind their armies towards their only castle. So if they don't attack me in this turn or their next turn, then we'll just be able to take their settlement and that will delete their armies. We're also going to set up ready for a potential castle defense using our ships there. As for Joss over on Goto, his army is damaged and it replenishes very slowly here since we don't have any buildings aiding our replenishment for those particular units. So he's just going to sit around and we'll see what happens with him later on. Back to Charles, after that victory earlier I realised we might as well go and counterattack and take some territory because this area is like the area we saw before where it's just a long continuous road with castles along it so you might as well advance up it since you're not abandoning any choke points. You're just continuously taking territory while keeping your front line very short and easy to defend. So we take one castle and, as you saw, I went for a vassal ship here. This allows us to move on in the same turn and not only push that enemy army away, but actually go and take this other castle right here. I need to drop the artillery to get extra movement, but there we go, and there's not really anything defending it, so that's all fine. The settlement is worth zero somehow, because, as we'll see, the enemy haven't got any buildings here. It's just a big empty space with a castle in the middle of it, so <laughs> we'll capture it and make something of it. And there we go. Now we've got a nice front line with a river just to the north that we can defend if we want to, and looks like the enemy can't really stop us from pushing further. I understand your request, General, but I must advise that rushing things out here is going to feel more graves than squatty boots. Some bright sparks already been around all the islands dumping crate loads of rifles everywhere. The Japs probably spent a fair few bob on all this and want to get their money's worth. There's loads of them ready for a shootout in every village and behind every tree. I've tried blowing them up, but not an inch is given. They don't seem to be scared of us, so I guess they just don't get scared of anything. Obviously I'm going to keep blowing them up, but we've only got enough ships to bring in so many bullets and boys each day. I understand this isn't a very satisfying answer to your question, but all I can say is, it's done when it's done, send more guns. I suppose you know already, but the rogue Major Jervis commandeered half the fleet. Not sure it's ever coming back from his little lair, but if it did, life would be a fair bit easier. As long as he's not on it, that is. You'd know what I mean if you'd met him, which I heartily recommend against. The Yamanuchi want to try and push Jervis away from one of their castles, and in this battle, they began by coming at us with this line of troops separate from the rest of their army that's not really advancing towards our main line, it's going to go around our flank. The edge of our line will be able to shoot at the edge of theirs, and because they're determined to move to a certain point, we'll get the first couple of volleys off and kill loads of men, defeating a whole unit on the right end of their line. As for the rest of the line, I could move my firing line to intercept them, but I couldn't be bothered, so I did it Jervis style. I just sent all of the lancers to charge right into the front of the enemy. We lost a whole load of lancers as a result. But it does work, we are able to make contact without routing our own units, so now in the ensuing melees we should be able to win, and that's most of this attack group cleared up. They had a few more units engaging at range, but I had the Royal Engineers here as well, who have nice long range and good accuracy, so their supporting fire makes sure we win those little line battles. Later on, more troops appear to attack our main position, and this time things are going to go much more smoothly. We'll just stand there with our superior troops, superior range and superior accuracy, cutting everybody down. I tried using the 
wide area of effect naval support fire, but because Jervis isn't very good at naval support fire, the wide area is really, really wide, and dropping shots randomly among the enemy army didn't appear to actually do very much damage at all, just because the attack was so scattered. Don't really need it though, we are absolutely annihilating the frontline infantry as they come into range. There was one chance for the enemy to get a good charge with their samurai on us because of a little mound that was blocking some line of sight, but half the men, or more than half the men, got gunned down in the last couple of seconds there, so got away with that. And as you can see, the replay also glitched, so this is the normal footage. At the same time, I was using my cav to wander around at the back, which kited off loads of the enemy's infantry. While that made the fight easier, it then made the fight longer because I had to kite them all the way back to kill them, since I couldn't be bothered to chase after them, but eventually we got our decisive victory. An amazing trade, the enemy lost thousands and thousands of troops, we lost a couple of hundred, and the force inside that castle we're besieging is basically dead, so it's going to be ours soon. Now there's more news of betrayal incoming from the Gerardo. They're still conspiring against us, but they still haven't actually done anything. They've been standing there for a long time now as if they're going to attack. And since they've taken so long, we're now in a position to stop them. We've got a full stack's worth of troops now inside the castle, if you include the garrison. And we can just sneak in behind them, as I was planning earlier, and destroy them right now. So that's the conclusion to all that. I did think something more impressive might come of the threats to betrayers, but our vassals didn't really want to go for it by the looks of things. Those two armies disappear because the faction has been destroyed, and that's all very nice. The issue with attacking your own vassals is that it might make people dislike you, but that doesn't appear to really be the case. Our other vassals are still okay with us. We might be traitors, but they'll stick around for now by the looks of things. One interesting thing I noted here while I was in the diplomacy menu is that the Nagaoka actually quite like us. They don't hate us like all the other Japanese do, and I think it's because they're at war with the French, and they're presuming that we're at war with the French. We've got a big enemy of enemy bonus. We're actually not at war with the French, but we are the British, so it is a pretty safe assumption that we are anyway. Back to Jervis, I'm going to attack this castle. There is actually a full army standing there, which would in theory defend the castle in this fight, but I just used night attack because I couldn't be bothered to deal with that right now. And there we have it, we've taken the castle, our foothold on Shikoku grows, so we'll have to build up an army and move out somewhere, probably leaving something behind to defend. Charles needs to deal with an army coming from the south now. You might have thought earlier when I was talking about this area being a choke point, that the enemy can actually just attack from the other side of the choke point since we don't have this whole position secure and you are right so we can't move too far up the road going northwards because we have to keep coming back in case the enemy come at us from Awari and Mino but we'll sort that out in the near future. First we need to do this quick castle defense. Joss is being attacked by one and a half armies ish and We'll have the defender's advantage, naval artillery on our side, and the castle, so that balance bar being in the enemy's favour really means nothing at this point. Have you ever heard of anything like it? Funnily enough, I dare say I have. Did you ever hear the rumours of Wonder Company? Sounds like some stupid newspaper serial. It bears a striking resemblance. The story goes that certain individuals within Westminster created a secret project with the aim of creating a new kind of soldier, a super soldier. You think that's true? Ordinarily, I would say no. Only there is a certain detail of the story that resonated with our predicament today. Through some strange method, they succeeded in creating men of extremely firm constitution. Men who could rupture your eardrums with a mere shout or rip out your spine wholesale. Impossible. So it was real? I don't know. The Wonder Company was disbanded and all its members were killed in the story. But some had already been sent out on secret operations. I fear we've found their lost super soldier. <laughs> well, that's a tall tale indeed. Look into it further, would you? For now, all that matters is that he's doing a decent job, albeit out of our control. It hardly matters at this point, does it? No, not really. As long as... General? No. Right, finish your tea and let's get back to the house. This isn't tea. Oh, Lord.
Lord. We absolutely crushed that attacking army, getting something like a 20 to 1 kill-death ratio, so now we're in perfect condition to counter-attack. We got attacked somewhere else though, it's the Kuwana coming for a surprise attack at Yamashiro. Apparently they had a couple of armies hidden in my territory that I hadn't discovered, so they could make a quick run for this undefended castle and take it. That was pretty nasty, I even had reinforcements in the background there coming up towards this castle, just in case something like this eventually happened, but they beat me to it. Looks like the Kanazawa were thinking of attacking Charles there as well, but gave up at the last second after forming up right in front of him, so we'll probably end up facing them later on. For now, I just wanted to review this strange situation that's occurred. We've got three armies standing around in a big long line there, probably moving down towards Kyoto by the looks of things, and now we need to counterattack them and try to stop them as best we can. I'm going to take Dorian off the front line with John to come into the woods north of Kyoto, setting up an ambush that will hopefully stop that army that just took Yamashiro from moving down towards Kyoto this turn. And if they don't move, we can move up to them and besiege them with help from the men already hidden in the woods. As for Joss, I'm just going to kill the survivors left over from that castle battle. And now I wanted to move out and go on the offensive, as I said, since the enemy probably lost all their men. And indeed, there's nothing defending this next castle over, so we'll go for it. We are leaving our castle now very lightly defended, and they do have another army to the west. So we'll just see if they choose to take that opportunity to attack. We do still have our fleet and our garrison units available to defend. Now I'm going to advance across the river with George Hook and try and take some more territory and actually start pushing the front line forwards. It proved to be a little bit harder than expected because of the very small reinforcement ranges. I couldn't get multiple armies to go over the bridge and attack at the same time. Eventually realized I can attack with my support army first since George is just stuck in the enemy zone of control and that gets things going. And long story short there, after a bit of maneuvering I besieged the enemy castle. I also put some troops on the bridge to defend against anyone going behind me, but then I actually forgot to attack the castle. You can see I kind of got distracted and started just building things elsewhere. So now that's going to inadvertently just be left as a siege and I think I'll remember it or spot it again at some point later in the campaign. Now we're going to try and deal with these armies marauding around in our territory and I thought this is a perfect chance to give Lawrence a battle of his own. I moved out with all of his volunteers to attack this army and as it happens the enemy are almost all melee units. They've got tons of ninja and tons of samurai. Not the best matchup because our firing line is low grade so the question will be can we stop them before we take their massive charge? There was a hill on the battlefield that I wanted to try and get on top of before the engagement began, but I was too slow. The enemy came at us right from the start of the fight, meaning only my right flank has any sort of height advantage. I've got my line really narrowed together because the enemy's formation is quite narrow, so our formation is thick as a result, which may give them more of an advantage in melee because we've got more ranks for the enemy to work through and hopefully the back ranks will be able to fire as well as the enemy advance. It seems to be hit and miss whether ranks really far back in a unit will fire. In these more loosely spaced volunteer units, it seems to be more likely to happen, so that's handy. Now the enemy don't have a general in this battle and just there their captain among those ninjas was killed. That gives us quite a big advantage in morale. The enemy might actually rout before they reach our line just because of the morale shock from losses and gunfire. That's going to help us out enormously as several units won't engage us. The ninja who perhaps have higher morale than the samurai do seem to get in okay though and that's obviously going to be an issue as the tetsubos get to work just absolutely annihilating these line infantry. The only hope for us is that there aren't that many of them, so while they're going to get good engagements here and there, the rest of our army can start surrounding the enemy and shooting into the melees to make things go better. And these conscripts, as we've seen before, actually do alright fighting in melee. They have pretty bad shooting stats, but mysteriously okay melee stats. I ended up trying to run away from the melees as they started getting worse and worse, but 
The enemy ran away at the same moment because we just won on army losses. We shot so much stuff as they advanced and defeated the few line infantry units that they did have that our overwhelming advantage was enough to make the enemy cool off their attack even if they were winning here and there. So that was all alright in the end, like many things in this campaign it proved to be much easier and quicker than expected. This is what happens when you are blind to the world. You become weak. You become the prey of the strong. Today we saw the difference between a wise man and a foolish one. We did our duty and made the world a little wiser. The new Japan will not repeat the mistakes of the old. As part of the empire, we shall know what it means to be rich, to be respected. We men who serve both our country and our queen shall be rewarded best of all. Do not listen to the peons of the Shogun. They are like the slaves that the empire frees. They are like the poor wretches that the empire clothes and educates. They are barbarians. The future will have nothing good to say about them. Let us carry on and make our homeland as strong as Great Britain. Let us be the light of civilization on the far side of the world. We went right into another battle, this time against the Kanazawa next to Charles, and we're once again on this battlefield that has all the mountainous terrain, which helps us out quite a lot because while we're the attacker, we're going to force the enemy to attack us. We blow their reinforcements up using naval support fire, and their main army has already been blown up slightly and continues to be blown up by our howitzers, and that's what's forcing them forwards. We have the ranged advantage for the AIs, like, yep, we'll run up the mountain and try to take out the artillery but obviously that's not going to work very well for them because now we have a really nice position. As usual, the AI decided to sacrifice some cav at the start of the battle, attacking us with Bow Ninja, and yes, that didn't do anything as you might guess. The artillery continued to fire and inflict tons of damage on the enemy as they advanced, and we even managed to actually rout a few units as they came in, since they don't have a general again, and that's just surprising. Usually the artillery, because of that weird hitting the end of the line glitch thing, actually doesn't do very much. Now, the enemy did surprise me by coming at me with some old guard, elite infantry who outrange conscripts. That means my line is in danger, the enemy can stand there and shoot me from a distance and force me to advance towards them. I'm dealing with this using the alternate solution, I guess, which is to run away, because then the enemy will start marching towards you and they might march into your range and allow you to get the first shot off in my experience anyway. Elsewhere, regular line battling is going on where we just have a formation advantage since the enemy are all uh, stuck going around rocks. They can't form up in a proper line, whereas we have plenty of guns firing on the enemy at all times. These ninja decided that they wanted to walk casually towards our firing line and they got shot. I'm guessing they weren't even planning to survive that little moment. The enemy's right was sort of outflanking us over here, but because of the mountains, they can't really go around us. And that just ended up being a long-range gun battle down the hill. Didn't go particularly well because we were actually locally outnumbered in terms of the number of people facing the enemy, but we can sort that out later on. As for the old guard situation, things went fine because as I ran away, they changed their target onto something in the middle of my line, which forced them to move closer to our line and get shot by the conscripts. So it all went well in the end. And I'm skipping now to some time later when we've shot plenty more of the enemy, just a couple more units holding out and for some reason trying to attack us despite that balance bar not looking very good for them. The artillery constantly pounding them and they're taking extreme losses from gunfire. <laughs> Eventually we convinced them to leave. There's our result, a very nice one indeed. So that's those armies mostly destroyed. They did both have surviving units, but I could just advance on and team up with Lawrence to take them down. So now our territory will look a bit nicer fewer enemy flags affronting our vision and hopefully now we'll be able to push on and take that castle just behind Lawrence there which will secure the area against further attacks such as the ones we've just seen. 
The Toyama take out our vassal further north, which is annoying. They offer peace, but we are not taking peace from anyone. We'll have to go and avenge our vassal in a moment. First, we get attacked by a Toyama ship, which brings in a couple more ships. So this is really the same naval battle we saw recently, fighting in the same port cove thing, where our coastal guns will just destroy incoming enemy ships with no effort whatsoever. There goes a corvette. A second corvette came in with a frigate trying to inch up behind it. That corvette exploded, damaging the frigate and setting it on fire. Absolutely ideal. And after a while, and a bit of micro with my coastal guns, because they stopped firing for some reason, we blew up the frigate as well in the background there. A heroic victory, and once again, the gunboat we have actually docked here just didn't take part in the fight at all. It's just baiting the enemy onto our coastal guns. Pretty good. We are ruling the waves without even going out on the waves. Very efficient indeed. We'll leave that bait out there and see if it happens again. Finally, Charles moves up to attack the Tiyama and avenge our vassal, as I said. It looks like I couldn't attack them here, so I thought I'll drop the artillery and attack, but sometimes that doesn't work. When you're too close to the enemy, you can't separate your units off in order to leave slow things behind. In this particular case, we can just use another unit from the nearby castle to initiate the battle, and there we have it. I'm not going to remake the battle because I think it makes more sense for us to occupy this castle, given that it's close to the river crossing. This is a pretty defensive point that's likely to be the focus of future attacks, so we'll hold it ourselves to make sure it acts actually stands this time. And we'll end up sending Lawrence to secure the southern approach as well, so this battlefront will soon be a little bit less dodgy. That's it for now, thank you very much for watching, special thanks to the officially Devon patrons, and I hope you'll join me to see the AI try to avoid a most clever trick I set up for them in the next episode of Honourable Gentlemen.